हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ मंजरी बरेदे एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक मैग्नेटिक पाउडर फॉर फिंगरप्रिंट डेवलपमेंट मैग्नेटिक पाउडर्स आर फाइन फेरोमैग्नेटिक पाउडर्स दैट आर अप्लाइड टू द लेटेंट फिंगरप्रिंट सर्फेस विद अ मैग्नेटिक बॉन्ड इट वॉज फर्स्ट इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय मैकडोनल इन नाइनटीन सिक्सटी टू अलॉन्ग विथ इट्स मैग्ना ब्रश द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ मैग्नेटिक पाउडर इज बेसिकली दैट Uh, the particles of this powder adheres to the fatty oily and moisture residues left by the fingerprint on the non porous surfaces so as we can see in the diagram the gray colored uh, particles are adhering to the orange colored fingerprint residue uh, with uh, fats oils and moisture which is present on a yellow colored non porous surface so here is the history and development so as we first discussed uh, it was first introduced in 1962 by mcdonnell uh, who introduced magna brush as the applicator for magnetic powders it forms a brush like stru structure at the tip because of the magnetic field the further developments were carried out in the late 20th century and the early 21st century uh, the respective work done in the respective years uh, is listed below Uh, here is the process of uh, making of these magnetic powders so these magnetic powders are made by the process of grinding and milling the iron grit particles to produce granular and flakes magnetic powders respectively the components of magnetic powders are there, there are basically three components namely the first one is pigments which are non magnetic non magnetic flakes of copper aluminum copper or aluminum which are used to add color and contrast to the latent prints so basically these are used to add color and to make the uh, print visible to the naked eye the second one is carriers which is uh, magnetic iron car carrier for preferential adhesion to a latent print residue with particle size around 50 micrometer in diameter so these carriers are basically the particles which ad adheres to the fingerprint residue The third one is surface surface enhancers. It is uh, basically a stearic acid which promotes a smoother and reflective powder surface uh, and improve adhesion. This stearic acid is added during the milling process and are used for the production of mainly flakes powder. So here is the detailed process of grinding and milling. Grinding is used for the production of granular particles of metal and their oxides of various sizes. they are made by smoothing the rough surface of coarse iron grit to form granular particles second one is milling it is used for the production of flakes powders with surface enhancements enhancements like stearic acid uh, which are and these are produced by passing the iron grit through a ball mill to produce iron flakes so here is uh, here are some types of these uh, magnetic fingerprint powders the first one being magnetic granular powders second one is magnetic flake powders third one is magnetic fluorescent powders and fourth one is thermoplastic powders with iron base we'll we'll discuss uh, each of these now so the first one is magnetic granular powder so these powders have large magnetic carrier particles of metal and pigment the smaller non -ma non magnetic pigmented particles adhere to the fingerprint ridges and develop finger marks finger marks Uh, and uh, this powder is uh, suitable for textured and polyvinyl chloride that is pvc and plastic surfaces the second one is magnetic flake powders uh, rather than rounded particles they have a flake structure these are flat plate like particles which are more efficient for finger 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 mark development than the iron grit which is normally employed in commercial non magnetic powders Uh, it is most suitable for, for smooth and dark textured surfaces the third one is magnetic fluorescent powders these are uh, the fluorescence spectrum spectrum of these powders ranges from 450 nanometer to 570 nanometer uh, and commercially these are available in only two colors that is red and green uh, and the particles are granular in nature and it is most suitable for the development of finger finger marks over multicolored plastic bags glass and other non porous surfaces the fourth one is thermoplastic powders uh, these powders are essentially photocopy toners that are used to visualize and develop finger marks on paper tissues so here is the here are some photos of uh, granular powders fluorescent powders and flake powders 
So here we can clearly see the difference between granular powder and flake powder. The granular particle are uh, smooth in nature, soft and uh, somewhat circular and granular in nature, while the flakes powder are long, flat and flakes in uh, and flake like structure and having and are having flake like structure. So here is the magnet. Here is the photo of magnetic fingerprint power kit. It contains all the necessary instruments and uh, 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 substances which are used to develop the latent fingerprint. Uh, some of these are listed here. Uh, so firstly it contains all the type of uh, different powders which are used to develop fingerprint, fingerprints. Uh, the second one is magnetic wand which is also called as magna brush. The fourth one is fingerprint lifters. The sixth, uh, sixth is writing implements. And the seventh is observing light, which can contain UV light or other alternative lights. So moving on, let us now come to the most important part that is the how to develop latent fingerprints using magnetic powders. So here are some steps uh, listed uh, below, which are followed while developing a latent fingerprint. So step one is identifying of latent fingerprints by the use of UV light or other alternative light as the latent fingerprints are not visible to the unaided eye. The second step is photography under oblique lightning and this photography is done before the beginning of uh, development. And this photography should contain at least two of the four points listed here. Step 3 is uh, the magna brush, use of magna brush and magna wand which has a small magnetic with a demagnetized rod which on pull or push releases the attached magnetic powder. The fourth step is uh, the application of this powder to the fingerprint surface. So here one thing to be noted is direct physical contact should be avoided between the uh, magnetic powder and the fingerprint residue. One should gently tap the magnetic uh, tap the magnetic rod uh, or brush so that the powder directly falls on the fingerprint residue, uh, uh, avoiding the direct physical touch. Fifth one is again uh, photography after development. The sixth thing lifting uh, lifting fingerprints, which should be avoided in two cases. The first one is if the material on which the fingerprint is is transferable, transferable or transportable. And the second one is if it is a semi-porous surface like paper. The seventh step is the wrap-up photography which should include the casted material over the surface and along with prepared casted prints. The eighth one is the most important uh, which is packaging of developed fingerprints. Uh, here are the seven points uh, which one should consider while packaging these fingerprints. Now moving on let us see now let us see some advantages. The first one is since the phys direct physical touch is avoided, minimal damage is seen uh, with the fingerprint, with the latent fingerprint. Uh, the second one is it is exten extensively used powder uh, for the development on horizontal surfaces. The third one is uh, the excessive powder can easily be removed if uh, by only uh, passing the magnetic wand over the fingerprint. The fourth one is if the uh, powder spills out of the container, it is easy to clean since it is magnetic in nature. The fifth one is it is easier to learn other than non-conventional, sorry, other than conventional non-magnetic powders. Moving on, let us now see some disadvantages. Uh, so it is, as we have seen earlier, it is easier to apply on horizontal surfaces, but it is difficult to apply on vertical surfaces as they tend to fall more profoundly than a regular brush that uses non-magnetic powders. Uh, the second one is it has only limited color options as we have seen earlier in the types of uh, these powders. It is available in only two colors that is red and green. The third one is it is not applicable to magnetic surfaces. But this can be overcome uh, by using an animal hair brush with magnetic powder. So that's all. Thank you.